Hello YouTubers, in the first half of this video I will show you what's new in the 2022 model compared to the previous one and more up close. In the second half of the video I will give you my 1000 km review. The beauty of the CB500X is that you may use it for commuting or for a weekend tour or either for light dirt rides. It's an all-around bike. It's got a relative long travel suspension, 19 inch front wheel, bigger ground clearance as a cafe racer, wide handlebars, offers upright riding position, so has got in its DNA some real adventure genes which is worth a try. The new front brakes. The braking system of the 2022 model has been improved. The single 310mm wave pattern disc and two piston caliper front brake of the previous design has been replaced by dual 296mm wave pattern discs and actual mounted Nissin two piston calipers. The introduction of the smaller disc not only keeps any additional weight gain to a minimum, but also reduces the required pressure on the lever when braking. The new front suspension. Well, in my opinion, this is the most obvious improvement, the brand new front end setup. The 41mm telescopic forks of the previous design have been replaced by Showa 41mm separate function fork, big piston upside down forks with 135mm axle travel, which means 150mm cushion stroke, clamped by new top and bottom yokes. By dividing the functions, big piston pressure separation damper in one leg, spring mechanism in the other, reaction and ride quality has both improved. The new rear shock. The single tube rear shock absorber with its large diameter piston and 135mm axle travel, 60mm cushion stroke and 5 stage preload adjustment seems to be the same as in the previous model. The newly optimized spring grade and damping settings are the improvements. The new swing arm. The chain guard was reshaped got a new look. According to Honda, the redesigned lighter swing arm further improved the handling. Now constructed from 2mm steel rather than 2.3mm, it employs a hollow cross member and is stiffer rotationally and also more flexible laterally, which should improve handling. The new radiator. All I can say about the new radiator is that the new design is somewhat more stylish and according to Honda this radiator is lighter. I want to show you the mounting points in case you want to install a radiator guard. The new front wheel has got new mod guard design and according to Honda should be tougher. The redesigned 19 inch cast aluminium front wheel is lighter thanks to the thinner spokes. As a result, reduces unsprung weight to aid turning ability. 
Weight bias has also been adjusted with front rear bias percentage of 48.7 slash 51.3 compared to the previous 48.52. The new LED headlight. The manufacturer claims the 2022 model has got more powerful headlight LEDs, optimized high-low headlighting and addition of front indicator position lights. This is how it looks like in a residential area with decent public lighting. But don't be fooled, when the light source is moving the light is scattered and the illumination is not so effective. Let's have a ride in the city. The use of high beam is not permitted here, so I will use low beam in the following section. Now let's check it out outside the city where there is no public lighting. The tarmac reflects a lot of light, but when the bike is moving that's a different story. And now, let's see it on a dirt road. These were the improvements to the 2022 model. I will present other details in the next few minutes, up close. Stay with me. All the lights are LED except the license plate light bulb. The slim seat profile aids easy ground reach. Seat height is 830 mm and the upright riding position is very accommodating while providing excellent visibility. The fuel tank holds 17.5 liters including reserve. Combined with the engine's excellent fuel economy, it gives a range of 490, almost 500 kilometers. The handlebar is wider compared to a coffee racer. Be aware, the most of the Honda bikes got the horn button swapped with a turn signal switch. Pay attention, how reflective is the display? Let's have a look at the LCD display. It is easy to read in shadows. Unfortunately, it shines very much in a lot of light. It is glaring. It is difficult to read sometimes. In the evening, in the dark, it is easy to read. The LED panel provides enough light.
Let's have a look at the maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Crankcase breather. The manual says to the owner that it should be cleaned at every 4000 miles. Asterix 3 tells to the owner service more frequently when riding in rain or at full throttle. Okay, but where is the crankcase breather? Unfortunately, the manual doesn't tell us to the owner. Voila, there is the crankcase breather. We got plenty information on the swing arm. Let's have a look at this label. This pictogram here tells me that the luggage, including the case, may not exceed 11 kilograms or 24 pounds. How should be understood this? As a seed bag, as a rag bag, or as a tank bag, or as a side bag, or all of them together? I don't know. Let's check the manual. This is the Hungarian version, the EU version of the owner's manual. First, let me explain you. ED, it means European. KO, it means Korean bikes. And the U are for Australian and New Zealand bikes. This is the curve weight. As we can see, pretty much the same for all of them. The maximum weight capacity, Asterix 1 says, includes rider, pillion, all the luggage and accessories. In the EU and Australia is 189 kilograms. In Korea is 169 kilograms, 20 kilogram less. Wow. And this specification is the same what the label says, 11 kilogram maximum luggage weight in case of the EU. Asterix 2 says that includes luggages and all the accessories. Hmm. I am 100% sure if I go to a tour I will not fit into the 11 kilograms limitation with my luggages. No way. Let's have a look at the US version of the owner's manual, model 2022. As you can see, the curve weight it is pretty much the same. The maximum weight capacity it is 175 kilogram compared to the 189. 14 kg less. However, there is no any limitation on the luggage as we got in the EU. What is the reason for that? Honda delivers different bike in the US or this is a kind of EU limitation only? If you know the answer, let me know in the comment section. The rear wheel. Not including the swing arm, practically it is the same as the previous model. At the end of the day, all the power generated by the engine, it is transmitted to the tarmac, to the road, through the tires. So make sure you are choosing your tires according to your riding style and the roads you are riding. The muffler. Here is the rear brake. And the rear brake fluid reservoir. Mm. 
and we got to the engine oil label inspection window. Oops, it's rusty. These are the overflow and drain hoses. Oh my goodness. Is this normal to have so much rust in a four week old bike exhaust system? I don't think so. Let me know your opinion in the comment section. Let's see what is under the seat. This is the document bag with the owner's manual. And the rest, nothing special. So we got here the battery, the fuse boxes, some connectors, the tools. Let's have a closer look and a slower camera view of this under seat compartment. I'm not sure what is for that red connector. The white one is an extension for accessories. I am not sure about this one as well. If you know the purpose of these connectors, please let me know in the comment section. Here, there might be enough room to keep your first aid kit, for instance, a category A. Okay, and now let's have a look at the tool kit Honda provided with the bike. To the touch, the pouch feels very cheap. It's a pretty hard plastic. It's not soft at all. Let's see what's inside. Helmet set wire. I will make another video about this one, how to be used. Screwdriver. Flat type. the other end Phillips type a wrench metric 10 metric 14 this plastic tool is used to remove fuses makes easier to remove a fuse Allen key. I'm not sure about the size, seems to be metric 5. And a pin spanner to be used to adjust the rear spring. 
and an extension bar. Uh, the extension bar is pretty loose. It's gonna be difficult to use together with the spin bender. The life will prove or not the usefulness of it. So that's all. Let's pack it back. As already I mentioned, the seat height is 830 mm. I'm 170 cm tall with an inseam of 74 cm. And as you can see, I cannot flat fit with both of my feet. Only with one. However, in the traffic, that's far enough. In this review, I will touch upon the following topics. Riding in low temperature, suspension, handlebar, levers, seat, rear rack, windscreen, LCD display, phone charger, power, torque, ABS and traction control, assist slipper clutch system, corrosion protection, my biggest concern, brakes and fuel economy. The most of the thousand kilometers I rode during March, when the ambient temperature was pretty low, between 5 to 10 Celsius degrees, which is 41, 50 Fahrenheit. Although I had winter gloves, my hands were frozen. So very soon became obvious that I will need a solution. Many experienced riders on YouTube are suggesting that for a complete solution both hand guards and heated grips are required. Thus I put both items on my accessory list. Now, regarding the suspension, I believe that this is the best improvement Honda ever made to the CB500X. I had the chance to ride the 2017 model and Suzuki V-Strom 650XT as well and I came to the conclusion that this suspension is superior, far superior. Makes riding so much fun, it is easier to handle the bumpy roads or the dirt, it really, really makes life easier. And yes, some people will complain that the forks are not adjustable, but hey, this is not a hardcore enduro bike, it was meant for the occasional dirt rider. Someone who rides 10 maybe 30 percent of the time on dirt roads. In this 1000 km I made maybe 100 km on dirt roads and on the long run that might go up to 25-35 percent maybe and for that purpose I believe this suspension and the bike just fits the bill. I heard many riders complaining on previous models that a lot of vibrations are coming through the handlebars. Well, personally I have not experienced any unusual thing in this regard. If you are a short rider like me, you won't need handlebar risers. The CB500X is an ADV bike, hence has got wider handlebars compared to a coffee racer, for instance. That gives the rider 
better interaction with the bike and an upright riding position. Of course, one of the very first adjustments I made on the bike was on the brake lever. As I got short fingers, I set it to position 6, but later on I figured out that was too much. Right now I think it is in position 4. The clutch lever is not adjustable, but there is no need for it, in my opinion. Although I got short fingers, I can easily reach the lever. And the reason for that is the different shape the clutch lever has got compared to the brake lever. All in all, I'm happy with the levers. I don't feel the need to change any of them. For short one to one and a half hour rides, the saddle is comfortable, I have nothing to complain about it. However, after two hours, it feels a bit hard. If you wish to install a top box, for instance, you will need a rare rack accessory. I wish if Honda was providing a solution similar to the Honda NT1100 or Suzuki Vstrom 650XT where the rear rack has been integrated with the grab handles. The windscreen is adjustable, has got two positions, a low position and a high position, with 4 cm or 1.5 inches between them. The higher position just needs my expectations as I am not a tow rider and it should also be noted that I did not use it on the highway. I'm sure taller riders would agree with me that a 5 cm or 2 inches higher windscreen would provide a relevantly better wind protection. The LCD display is glaring, shining, sometimes it's somewhat confusing. During the night there is no problem, you can see it very well. That shining effect is not disturbing at all. Apart from this glimmering feature, the instrument panel is ok, is very well organized, I like it. According to a homepage called Statista.com, in 2021 the number of mobile devices operating worldwide stood at almost 15 billion, up from just over 14 billion previous year. The number of mobile devices expected to reach 18.22 billion by 2025, an increase of 4.2 billion. So hey, Honda and all motorcycle manufacturers, I believe that the USB charger, not a cigarette lighter, a USB charger should be part of the standard equipment. Right now the CB500X 2022 model comes without any charger, so my list of accessories got one more item. In this 1000 kilometers, I never ever felt the lack of power or torque. Yes, I was not riding highways nor hilly dirt roads, still I believe the bike has got enough power and torque. The ABS kicked in only once, the rear wheel, and it was doing its job well. The bike doesn't come with traction control, but honestly said, I don't feel lacking. Perhaps because I am not an aggressive rider. The assist slipper clutch system helps to prevent the rear tire from locking up when the deceleration of your vehicle produces a strong engine braking effect. It also makes the clutch lever operation 
feel lighter. And yes, I never ever felt fatigue in my left hand. Generally speaking, I'm okay with Honda's corrosion protection, except the exhaust system. As you can see in the first part of this video, that worries me. I don't think it is normal for a four-week bike to have such a corrosion on the exhaust system. Maybe I'm wrong. You might find it strange, but my biggest concern is this label. This 11 kilogram limitation of all my luggages. I made some research meantime and I found this label inside of a tank bag. As you can see, there are some load limitations here. For tank bags, 2 kilograms or 4.4 pounds. Saddle bags, 4 kilograms, 8.8 pounds. For side bags, 5 kilograms, approximately 10 pounds. For an ADV bike with almost 500 kilometers range, it seems to me completely unrealistic to have 11 kilograms luggage limitations. Somehow, it doesn't fit into the picture, at least to me. The brakes are doing a great job. The front brake, the rear brake, both. As long as you are using them properly, building the brake pressure slowly but surely, they will work fine. And the truth is that I didn't have a problem with the previous braking system either. Fuel economy is something where this bike excels. As you can see, I made 1026.8 kilometers with only 31.1 liters of fuel. That gives a 3 liters per 100 kilometers or 78.4 miles per gallon fuel consumption. Despite I was riding without luggage and pillion, there was no relevant level differences, I believe that's an impressive fuel consumption. Oh man, that is a long video. If you are still watching, you are really interested in the new CB500X. So should you have any question, let me know in the comment section. This concludes this video. Open road, safe ride.